6.01 p.m. We'll call to order a regular meeting of the Board of Education. Let's stand for the pledge. to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, Sue, any additions or deletions to the agenda to note? Um, there was uh, 6.9 and 6.10 were added since Monday night. Okay, thank you. Is there a motion to accept the minutes of the August 28th Board of Ed meeting? Jackie, second. Jenny, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, there are a couple of hearing a petition uh, uh, forms tonight. They don't relate to agenda items, so we'll save those uh, towards the end of the meeting. Uh, we'll move right into business considerations first. We have 6-1 through 6-10. Is there a motion for one or more? Motion for all. Jackie, second. Dan? And before we open it up um, for comments, I just want to recognize uh, two donations that we have here. Uh, we have one from Next Step Federal Credit Union, uh, for backpacks, and another from the AWB PTA uh, for uh, Buddy Bunch, $1,000 for playground equipment. Oh, it's two AW Becker PTA from Stewart's. That's the PTA meeting last night. It doesn't say that on this form, though, but that's what they said. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Ah, okay. Is it from Stewart's? No. No? Okay. Cool. See, the form is... Maybe. Yeah, yeah the donor is A.W. Becker, PTA. I'm not sure where the funding came from, but this donation's from the PTA, so thank you to them. And if it, the money did come from Stewart's originally, thank you to them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any discussion on the business considerations? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Personnel considerations, we have 7-1 through 7-15. Is there a motion for one or more? So moved. Mike moves for? 7-1 through 7-15. All of them. 7-1 through 7-15. All right, is there a second? I'll second. Dan? Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, special reports. Uh, go right to you, Dr. Bailey. Um, five of our board members were able to join us on the opening day with all staff, and um, such a um, exciting time. But um, what a wonderful sight to have so many of the board members there. I know that um, there are staff who actually watch our meetings, uh, either recorded, you know, they, they get. Uh, tips on topics that were important or maybe they watch it live and uh, they don't get to see us very often live and in person but uh, in front of all the staff very very meaningful so and I know it was a sacrifice all of you took time out of your your work days and your days to come and do that so thank you for doing that um, the uh, we had our sixth and ninth grade orientations we had our opening days and um, my kudos to the staff for coming back so uh, so strong and rejuvenated uh, after a, a summer where you got to change gears almost 180 degrees to begin and do this important work again. But it, when you see the smiling faces of the kids, it like reminds you um, that all the planning and decorating and uh, preparation for uh, classrooms and materials is, is worth it. Um, the school wall calendars have been mailed to everybody. And uh, what we know is that the issue with a lot of bulk mail is that uh, post offices strategically choose when they deliver them. Um, because, you know, you're, we're talking about thousands and thousands of these. So what we've seen is different post offices are delivering them at different rates. So some people already have them, um, like North Bethlehem, 
the northern part of our district. A lot of those folks have them. South Bethlehem, they're nowhere to be seen, depending on who you are. And, and, uh, and uh, we want you to know that they are all in process of being delivered. And in the event that anyone needs one, they are in all main offices. So if for some reason you need one more quickly, uh, you're certainly welcome to pick one up there. And the last thing is fee schedule 15.0 that you have in front of you. We uh, discussed this quite a few times last year and, and uh, based on our discussion last time, the missing piece that we inadvertently caused was those groups that use our facility on an ongoing basis who maybe don't have 80% of their membership um, as RCS. Right. As an example, the, um, I want to call them, thank you, this, the uh, swim club that uses our facility, um, they are usually about 60% of our students. So we want to recognize that. They're not a completely outside organization. So if, well, as you look at this roster now, what we've done is we took the first two groups, which is district groups, clubs, sports teams, and our community affiliated PTO, PTSO. That's group one. Group two is those groups in our community that are municipal agencies or those that have 80% or more. Youth basketball is a perfect example. They all are in that first column of no charge. The only difference is group two, if they're an outside entity, they just need to provide insurance to us. That's the only reason why there's a designation for group two at all. <clears throat> group three is where those other groups are that have traditionally used our facilities who maybe don't hit the 80% mark, but they still have membership from our school communities. And um, you can see it's a significantly uh, lower cost to do that. The, um, you know, the, definitely the rooms in question are like the pool, the gyms, things like that. We created a season rate, so if they wanted to use it for a season, $200. I apologize, the asterisk, it must have gotten cut off because this was more than one page. Um, I think that the explanation was a two month season. I think that's what I said. So I'll make sure that the asterisk is put back on there. 18, 12 weeks, okay. I'll make sure that's put back on there. So in other words, if they're gonna pay for a whole season, they'd have three months in there for that, that cost. <clears throat> um, and then the last column is what the last column was in the other iteration, which is outside organizations, no affiliation with us, or for profit agencies that for some reason want to use our facility. They would not be allowed to make a profit in our facilities. There's a tax liability for that. But if, for instance, uh, a dance company wanted to use our auditorium for a show, that's the rate that they would pay. They couldn't charge a gate fee and, and you know make money off of it, but they could use our facility to do that. Yep. Is that thirty dollars amenable to what would be reasonable for Starfish? Yeah. We're kind of hoping to accommodate them in a more reasonable way. Twenty-five dollars an hour for okay. a long time. Only <laughs> so a $5 we, yeah, okay, so we, we increased it a little bit, but also we didn't we didn't want to, you know, Cost them out, restrict yeah. them. Yeah. Way. I don't think a five dollar fee is. And there's a really on an ongoing basis. There's the ones who were really using it on an ongoing basis. All the rest of them, uh, not so much because they've all fallen into the category of one or two. Okay. Another thing that's on here under additional information, <clears throat> although it's covered in the facility use form, is that when someone comes on our, uh, onto our school grounds, vendors, if vendors come with them, it, they have to answer to the school district, not to the entity. So if a food truck were to come on school grounds because um, one of our school clubs is doing a fundraiser, that vendor needs to provide insurance, proof of insurance to the district. And people tend to miss that. They're like, all right, I'm a school organization. I have the right to use the facility. And then they hire people to come on school grounds. And 
in the event that, of course, there's a problem, we want to make sure that we're the first ones that are named on the insurance policy. So that's just a reminder. I put that in the fourth bullet there. Any additional thoughts? We think we captured everybody who might use it now. Yeah, well, thank, you. thank you. Thank you for the patience. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse? Uh, I actually don't have too much of an update <laughs> tonight because, uh, you know, all the we're very busy um, with audits and getting ready for school. So I don't have anything, but I am open for if anybody has any questions. I just have one. Sure. For the playground, the pre K playground at Becker, I had emailed you to see the breakdown. But is, um, as a part of that, is there any kind of plaque to acknowledge the PTs? Like, does Peter B. have one acknowledging the little playground that you guys put in through PTA? Or PTO, so. sorry. If there is one, it's in name of our former superintendent who passed while we were there. I believe there might be something there mentioning him. Okay. I don't know that it names the PTO in particular. Because okay. we did I definitely it. never noticed yeah, anything naming the PTO either. over there. Okay. There it was, was supposed to be a sign dedicating it to the former. Yeah, I apologize. It's yeah. been a long time since yeah, yeah. I've been to that playground, <laughs> yeah. like soccer, uh, many years ago. It, um, it's not in the something. plan at that point. It's not in the plan, but that's it's something, something we can absolutely or potentially mm -hmm. do. If that's something the board would like us to, to do, we can absolutely donation. look into that. And I know the, the playground at Glenmont was put in by their PTA or PTO, I don't remember which, and they had like a nice little plaque saying, you know, donation in part thanks to something like PTA and the families of Becker or whatever it is. I personally would like that to happen, so but I don't want to speak for everyone. So if you're looking for the board's approval. Yeah, I certainly think me. it's at least <laughs> worth finding out, you know, what that would cost. I, I don't see any issue with that. I would at agree least. Great idea. Yeah. I think we have the sign. We already have the signs, the age appropriate signs in the location already, so it wouldn't require a new sign. So we can look into that. Yeah. I mean, as long as it's within reason, I certainly think yeah. that's a, I mean, yeah. I would right. Well, while well, yes, we're at right. it, can we maybe yeah. check to well, make yeah. sure that Dr. McCarthy really is on that PTO playground? Because that was the intention so back long. in the day. I'll check on the way home. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> Mel, you mean the, um, the, the UPK playground, the small yes. one? Yes, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. okay. Thanks, Jesse. Yep. Any new business items? Or any old business items for discussion? I'm, I'm sorry, on the new business, I know we got an email um, today with a question about student parking um, here. And so I just wanted to at least, you know, have the question asked. Um, it sounds like a, a parent brought to the board's attention that. Um, the high schoolers used to be allowed to park uh, in a rear parking lot or part of the rear parking, sorry, I'm trying to be honest, thank you. <laughs> um, part of the rear parking lot, um, which helped in some of those, you know, earlier drivers being able to not need to navigate 9W at a busier time of day um, and turning left onto that, that road. Um, but it sounds like post COVID, they haven't been allowed to use the same parking that maybe once had been designated student parking. Um, as I understand it, this issue has been brought to administration before. So I was just wondering if we could understand, you know, did, did some of the student parking get changed? I have no familiarity with student parking at all. I have no idea where it is. Way in the back of the school, just. All right, not suggesting that, but, um, but I mean, the, the, the issue really that, that was raised to us was more of, you know, allowing particularly students who are coming from that back road to be able to use that access point um, and avoid maybe some of the, the trickier parts of, of 9W, especially during a busy time of day. It's about 2005 where the lots moved, the staff moved from the 9W end of the building over to the was called the academic wing, and the students were moved at the 9W. Um, the primary reason is 80% of the staff um, are working in that portion of the building. So we switched it almost 10 years ago um, in an attempt to try, and, and they, so the staff with their, Carolyn with her five bags, um, the staff walking with all of their materials were having to walk from that lot 
all the way down the full length of the building. So we switched it, and also recognizing that it, in a way, um, is safer for students to be exiting the campus on, at the light at 9W rather than the rear of the campus. So at, when the students arrive and when they leave, um, as, you, as you know, the buses are in the circle. There is no way to get through to the other side of the campus. So what we would inadvertently uh, do is we would have all of the students, if they were parked in the back, or even some of them parked in the back, they'd all be exiting on 101. And then, then we'd be making all of them turn left or right on 9W, rather than a few that live on 101 or come from South Bethlehem and choose not to go to the far corners um, where Losey's is and come down that way, or through Picked Away, which is that cut the corner road there. Um, so I'm sorry, just to understand. So was previously, and it sounds like perhaps quite some time ago, yeah. was previously all of the student parking was it kind of reversed from what it is now? So all of the student parking used to be back there and now it is all out front. Okay, right. sorry, again, I have no knowledge of this. So. Well, you said 2005, I think 15, right? 15, so yeah, not okay. 2005. I came you in said 10, 10 years, like but 15, you said 15, 05. Sorry, it was 15. It was a five in it. He's, I, agree with, I agree with everything else other than here. <laughs> it was well, after, I, I left, after I became assistant superintendent, right. uh, right. but just after. Um, and the other thing I would say is, having been in three school districts, um, students parking in a staff lot is a recipe for disaster. Not because they're bad drivers, but sometimes, sometimes they, um, you know, cause mischief. Some staff are very uncomfortable with the students knowing what car they're driving and you know when they're arriving and leaving for work. So we we purposefully separate them um, for that reason. But um, and they mostly assign parking this year as well. And and the last thing is, uh, and they did have that a while ago too. When we when the students were in the other lot, we were doing numbers. So. I would say it's been that entire time, that entire nine years, this is the first year we've gone back to numbered parking for them, which is also helpful. So it's not like a, I want the first spot. It's, that's your only spot. So there's no, no uh, competition in a lot. So I, I received a phone call from a concerned resident today as well. And I said, well, explain to me how, because we couldn't have all the students going there. I said, so how would, how would it look? And she said, only the students that live on 101 Blodgett, 396, there was about 10 students have to come to the school, prove their residency, and, and only, well, it was basically all the students that live kind of on the western part. They would have to prove their residency, and only those 10, she said it was about 10, would be the ones that would basically be allowed to park there. And I said, geez, it doesn't sound like a bad idea to me. Um, when I went here, that's where we parked. But things have changed, I understand that, you know. So I think it's something that could be considered. Um, I don't like the fact of going out there and making that turn in the morning. I think it's, especially for new drivers, I think it could be a little tricky. Um, the, the three roads yeah. that you mentioned, couldn't all of them take 396 or picked away out to 90? I think they can, yeah, I, absolutely, right? I think they can, I just think it was, you know, just a kind of convenience factor to come down this way and come right in. It does right add in. 10 minutes. If you live, I live in the hollow. It does. Yeah. We come down, straight down all the roads that Dan's paving, <laughs> straight down the hill. <laughs> if we were to go that way or that way, it adds a good seven minutes that way and 10 minutes that way. So perspective, it doesn't take us a short amount of time. It takes me eight minutes going straight through. Mm -hmm. Sycamore, 14 <laughs> from that corner. So it's, it's, it's a well, tough situation, you know. I mean, the only problem is if you start making exceptions and everybody else is going to want exceptions yeah. as well. So I don't want to yeah. knock those kids. Right, because then I know you the kids say there, well, about. what about my kid on Morehouse? Correct. There, there are other options that are safe options. It may be a little bit longer, but there are safe options for those kids to take as well. Um, is it possible also that maybe our SRO could help with some traffic management at that intersection in the morning? Like, I mean, if it's only a period of time that's... They're by the buses, right? Those are going by. Okay. Across. I mean, we might, to the enough. point, we might Thank be you. able to get Queemans to maybe post the up other there. Because that other intersection. Kinda, as everybody knows, when the speed limit's 45, yeah. everybody's going 55. Uh -huh. So and I could probably reach out to Queemans and say, in the morning, could you post a car there? Maybe just, it may bring everybody's 
Yeah, at least to help, you know, mitigate the problem a little bit, you know, even if we yeah. don't have a, a solution parking wise, but at right. least maybe if we can, you know, if we know there's a problematic area that is very close to the school that a lot of students are likely to need to take, then if there's something that we can do to maybe help reduce the likelihood of a problem, um, you know, at least that's something. Uh, you know, I certainly understand the, the yeah. concerns about the, the parking and changing it from the way that it is. Um, and I would also be hesitant on selecting like just this particular sect of people being able to park, especially if there's maybe closer parking spaces. Um, you know, I'm not sure that we necessarily want to, to get into that where it seems almost like people in a certain neighborhood have preferential, you know, parking and things like that. Um, but if we can, like I said, if we can do something to at least, you know, maybe reduce the likelihood of incidents happening at that intersection, yep. um, that could be helpful. Because that is a tough intersection. Yeah. I mean, there are other safer ways to go, but I like Dan's idea. Maybe we can talk with the town and mm -hmm. get, get somebody down there. Yeah. Because yeah. it's an ugly left turn there. Right. Something. Even, even at least the, something. Even in yeah. the middle of the day when you right. think nobody's around. Yeah. You have, you you have Olson's <laughs> entrance right there. You have the buses coming in. You have the kids coming in. It's, it's a busy just, place. It's and it's a road. main <laughs> route through town. It's one of the only two right. routes in and out right. of our town. But that, so. that turn, though, yeah. you've probably taken it. Yeah. You just can't oh, for really sure. see left. Yeah, you can't see anything. Especially when the weeds are up above yeah, yeah, right. your car so yeah. Yeah, I mean a lot of the propane facility discussion was based on <laughs> FCS school buses not going that way and kids not going that way so um, I, I recognize there is a concern yeah for sure but yeah like I said if, if we can at least do something to help you know maybe ease this a little bit I think that'd be great um, even if it's not you know changing the parking situation itself um, it sounds like there might be some <laughs> other answers mm -hmm. thank you I'm sorry, this isn't necessarily new business, but do you, I know Jean's not here, do you anticipate that she'll be going over the preschool special education service contract with Albany County at the next meeting? Okay. Yeah, she had it actually on her report. Yeah, that's why I was asking, <laughs> she's had it on the yeah. report, so I just wanted to. And then, um, the question around the uh, three days to respond? Yeah. I have the answer to that. Okay. Um, it says uh, three days for the provider to respond. She pointed out that we're not a provider. We're an evaluator, so it doesn't apply to us. It's a boilerplate contract that they use with all agencies. So that caveat doesn't apply to us, which is good. We don't know how they meet the three days, but we're not obligated to either, because we're not actually. The county is required to provide the service. We're only being contracted to evaluate those students. OK, I guess my concern is that in Article 2, it says the provider shall accept, and then it says, authorization from the board in all bold. The board would be my impression of me. Is that not no, I, accurate? I, no, I believe it was defined in that document. I believe board was defined it as us. I so I just want to know what our liability. I just and want to I, clarify. You're talking about 6-3? From, from, from last meeting. Oh, from last meeting. meeting. Okay, so if we want to wait for Gene, that's that fine. Gotcha. Okay. But Sorry. the way it reads, it says board in all bold, and they reference the board being us. So I didn't know what our liability slash the districts was in this. Yeah. I recognize that they're not held to the provider standard, but they mentioned board and municipality and board three times, so. Mm -hmm. It was defined as us for board, and I don't know who else it would refer to. Okay. I guess my concern also too was with if it takes us that long to approve IEPs, I recognize that changes need to be made and things need to be addressed that might not resolve it within the three days. That, that seems a little <laughs> unrealistic. Um, but I didn't know if there were any compliance issues surrounding that with how quickly we can provide services to the preschoolers because they have to be board approved for their IEP to be effective. Or at least that's my understanding. I also... And I'm sorry to, to belabor this point a little bit, but based on this contract, the provider is us. It defines provider. And it says, Ravina Queen right. Selkirk Central School in the municipality of Ravina, herein referred to as the provider. But we don't provide the program, we provide the evaluation. So like program would be the actual preschool as I opposed see. to the evaluation. Okay. And we just did the evaluation. I, I was Thank more you. concerned about the broader reference of that. And maybe it doesn't apply since we're only doing evaluation, but I just didn't know. Well, and I, 
I didn't pull it back up, so I'm not sure if that's specifically what it references, but most of the times when we're doing an evaluation or a reevaluation, it's for the following school year, not the current. Well, I would think the evaluation would be for the coming, for the current year if they're looking to give them services in preschool. I mean, most of my preschoolers that get evaluated get services within that school year. Like my students get evaluated and come to me within a month or two. <clears throat> yes, if it's an initial. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I was if under the an impression initial. we were doing initial evals as well. Okay. Yeah. So for initial evals, that would be the case. But for re well, or I guess then I would want clarification because I was under the impression we're doing initial evals. Okay. I mean, that's okay. generally what the preschoolers do. They don't tend to need as many re because they're only in it for two years. Right. I guess I was thinking if some a parent requested a outside, could, yeah. another outside... Yeah, that could be a possibility too, but any initial vow is going to need to result in Gene and for Colleen. I think Colleen, okay. Colleen would need to weigh in on this as yeah. well. Okay. Um, anything else on old business items? Okay, I'm going to request that we. Sorry. Go ahead. No. I was just going to ask when the policy meeting is. The policy. The next policy committee. Meeting? Committee meeting. Yeah. Did. For the you're going to start our our committee? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be the third Tuesdays of the month. Third we'll take she's got to check some other schedule, but that's oh, the plan. I missed that. Okay. Yeah, that, that's no, a didn't. good that's a good point though. Is, yes. So is there somewhere that all of the committee meetings are posted <clears throat> so all board members can see? Well, Sue and I just talked about it. Yeah. That one. So we're just when he came in and just. But maybe what within the okay. the board matters portion of uh, board docs, if we could have some type of committee schedule there just so everybody has awareness. I just know that on old business there is the sub rate and I just wanted to make yeah. sure that I was following up if that's going to be dealt with in committee. Yeah. I won't mention it here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, no, we should look at okay. having a way to post all the meetings though, so everybody's aware of when. I know that Thank the you. C and I are all set. Yeah. So it would be easy to post it. She emailed yeah. out to the people that are on the committee. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. no hardship. So if I just, I'll just tell you this right now, at least for the policy, it's not yep. confirmed yet because we just spoke. She's yep. going to check with their schedules. Okay. But right now it's looking at the, the, it'll be the third Tuesdays of the month. So this, oh, okay. year, this month, September 17th. Is it 17th? I think it was. Yeah, at, it uh, should be. At 530. Okay. That's the Tuesday for sure. Right. I think it's 17th. Yeah. Still waiting at, you know, confirmation. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm just going to suggest that we take a brief recess right now, five minutes, and we'll come back. I just have one conversation I'd like to have, so feel free for the next five minutes. Okay.
Okay, continuing on. Uh, we have two hearing and petition forms here. So the first one, uh, call out Mr. Ted Smith. Good evening, everyone. Real, real quick, I just wanted to um, take a quick moment to thank the five board members who showed up at the opening day to support the uh, the beginning. As Brian mentioned, Melanie Potter, Dan Baker, Ed Bedinati, Jackie County, mm -hmm. and uh, Mike Deo, who gave a terrific speech there to get everybody going. It was really appreciated. And as uh, Dr. Bailey stated, it is, it's true, I can't get precious little company in these chairs at board meetings. So it was really nice for, for people to put faces to the names and, and just feel supported by you all. So thank you for coming. Um, also just wanted to mention that we have 17 new teachers who joined us this year. And I gotta tell you, we're very excited about them. They seem like a very talented recruiting class. They are young, make me feel super duper old but they are, uh, they're talented and they're optimistic and they're ready to go. So it gives us all a really good feeling. We're all pretty energized, optimistic, and determined. Uh, just one last thing, as also was mentioned, it's September 11th, and this day is always, always a moving day. I was driving my daughter home from school today and she had talked about it in her science class in sixth grade, and she got asking me about my memories of it. And it's wild when your children ask you to recall these events that are just burned into you and to express them, it is very moving. So I just wanted to acknowledge that a lot of the teachers uh, went out of their way today to help our young kids sort of become aware of that event and how significant it was for all of us and for the whole country, for the whole world. Uh, and I didn't want that to go unrecognized. And just finally on the same note, if you all haven't been to the 9-11 memorial right across the bus circle, it's really something, it really is something. It was uh, developed by a couple of teachers 23 years ago, right after the event. Somebody I never had the pleasure of knowing, Mr. Miller probably did, but Bonnie O'Connor, I believe, uh, sort of spearheaded that, getting all the supplies together. And I believe by the end of the month, by the end of September, uh, that thing was, was more or less up, I believe, and ready, ready to go. And another teacher, Bill Fisher, has been tending to it uh, for 23 years, just going out there, resetting it, leveling, making sure it looks good. And we were out there again today. The whole middle school is out there to uh, to see it. Dr. Bailey played taps on the bugle, um, and it's just a real asset to the community. So I just wanted to commend that to your attention. And before you drive on home tonight, if you haven't gotten a closer look at it, take a couple minutes and go uh, have some peace and quiet at that memorial. All right, thanks a ton. Thanks, Ted. All right, next, uh, Mr. Robert Baker. Good evening, how are you today? Um, thank you for taking the time, uh, dear members of the board. Um, I just wanted to come briefly tonight to talk about a situation. Uh, I'll keep it generic, because I know we're, we, we want to avoid anything personal, but um, my son, um, two years ago, was diagnosed with a, with a health condition. And at that time, uh, one of the, the consequences was he was being kept off the, the playing field, understandable. Uh, in those two years since then, uh, working with his, um, his, his doctors, both his specialist and pediatrician, they've given the green light to allow him to play. Uh, unfortunately, he's still being kept off the playing field here. And it is a um, big part of his life. Uh, he is something that he's been playing here at RCS uh, for the club since he was four years old. I still remember uh, 30 seconds into his first game scoring a goal <laughs> and it's just him just lighting up. Um, uh, he's a very active young man. He continues to play for club soccer. Uh, he's, he goes to the gym, very active. And since the diagnosis has not had any uh, sort of consequences. Um, so we have tried to um, offer some, um, some workarounds. Um, we, uh, we understand it's a very litigious world we live in, uh, offered um, you know, some sort of waiver, anything you'd like, um, limited playing time. Um, my wife is an RN, I am certified in CPR. Uh, we're committed to being at every practice, every game. Uh, whatever it takes, just, just to, so he can be a part of that important high school experience that means so much to, to, to so many young people. Um, and I'm just afraid that there maybe is a blanket policy where we see a certain diagnosis and we, oh, we, can't, we can't have that. Um, we can't, you know, risk that person. 
but not every situation is exactly the same. So uh, I'm, I'm hoping that the board could possibly look into the situation and see if there can be established some way to have um, more than just a, a person or two making this decision, um, having, again, a workaround for someone who may have a condition but um, is still able to be active and participate in this kind of situation. Um, obviously, I, in the card, I've got my, um, my email and my phone number. I'm, I'm more than happy to take the time to come speak with anybody individually, talk on the phone, answer an email um, to, to, to further enlighten the situation. But um, this, 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 uh, this would mean the world to him. He knows most of the kids on the soccer team because he's been playing with them since he was literally this big. So uh, it's just something to bring to your attention, and I, and I really thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. This time I'll request a motion to enter into executive session to discuss the uh, employment of a particular person as well as matters bearing on collective negotiations pursuant to Article 14 of the Civil Service Law. Let's get into the Article 14 <laughs> stuff. So moved. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> Second. Second. And all in favor? Aye. Aye.